Oh, that, that was, was a low punch. He looked as though he jumped before he hit him with that low punch, though, Jim. It wasn't a devastating punch, Reg, but it was certainly low. I don't think Rocky Janney needs to make any big deal about it, but it was low. Yeah, it was enough to make the eyes look, although, of course, they're wearing the obligatory foul-proof cups. So that's a decent jab. Rocky Janney throws when he decides to use it, and Eubank hasn't really found an answer for that yet. Oh, that was a nice little combination, though. He's putting punches together well, Eubank. As I say, this is as good a start, pace-wise, as I've seen from Eubank. How dare you, that's a, the old touch of the ego, isn't it, again there? That little uh, flurry by Rotigiano has li certainly lifted the crowd again. I always wonder what influence that will have on the judges should it go 12. It shouldn't have, but it often does. <laughs> Round four. And it's getting a bit intriguing now, Jim, isn't it? The the look around stuff in the opening rounds has stopped. Jim, he's not putting full power into those uh, punches. There, there's the card then with Barry McGuigan there. Two rounds and one even to Eubank. See, the good thing about Eubank's there. Uh, his work rate reg is higher than we normally see, especially in the first few rounds of a fight. And at least if he keeps working, he's stopping Rocky Janney from working. Rocky Janney's a lot more safety first than I thought he would have been. I thought he would have taken a few chances, uh, tried to, to grab hold of the fight here with a scruff of the neck, but he hasn't. He's actually boxing behind Eubank at times. Yeah, that's, that's the way I saw him, although he did a, a pretty good disruption on... Uh, Chris Reed, the American, that was back in 88 though. Things have changed since then. He vacated the, the championship then, uh, Richard Gianni. Held the IBF version of the title. Really the Texan actually for that Vince Bullwear. See, he's not doing anything smart whatsoever. He's just walking towards Eubank with his, his hands tucked in front of his face, catching the leads and then trying to come back with some counters here. Nothing clever at all. So you think just putting the punches there at times, Jim, and he, they're scoring, but they're not very powerful. It's the single shots that he does the damage with. Rocky Gianni kind of made a big face there. I think more or less caused the referee to give the Eubank a telling off there. It wasn't as bad as he was making out. No, he leaned on him as well. The good thing for you. The good thing for Eubank, whenever he decides to step up the pace, he seems able to control Rocky Gianni. He can put him back into that defensive shell, but he doesn't want to do this. He can't stand off and let the fellow use his jab. No, you're shaking his head there, Eubank. To say, no, you're not hurting. It's still scoring. Pumps that right-hand lead out. Too keen to mix it though, really, Roger Gianni. And until he thinks he's got uh, Eubank on the hook, he's, he's a bit, well, not scared, but a bit concerned about taking chances. Yeah, that surprises me. I thought he'd have been a bit more kind of cavalier in his approach, take a few chances. But he's, he's actually allowing Eubank to decide the, the action. And it's the fifth round then. Katie Blake joining us. The WBO Super Middleweight Championship of the World at 12 stone with uh, Chris Eubank defending. I'm sure unless you lived in the cave, you don't need to know who, which one is Eubank. So the chance from the packed German crowd here of Rocky, Rocky. 
Oh, he's, got, he's having a little runabout. He goes a walkabout sometimes. And he, he's complaining, he's saying he's turning his back on him there, but the referee doesn't care about that. There's a lot of boxers done that. I, I'm not sure it's a good thing for Eubank to do. It's... Right, Ronnie Davis in the...